It's all going nearly wrong. <laughs> I was so determined to be on time tonight and I nearly wrecked everything then. Mike's lovely picture nearly crashed into the soprano sax which would then have crashed into the the beer and it would have ended in tears. 
mine. Minasan, everybody, Yoroshku, Midoks, Midrex. Yabba dabba do. Hope everybody's on great form. We're all good here in the den, I think. Still waiting for the warmth. <clears throat> Joy, you've got the sun shining. It's going to be shining even more in a few weeks, mate. Definitely, guaranteed. Good to see you all. And uh, Judith and Bart, I was thinking about you today. We were all thinking about you because um, uh, there was a heron in the field. First time for, I don't know, maybe a year. It was the heron that inspired Bart's song. Definitely the same one. So big love to you all. <clears throat> Now, you know who's coming north this week, don't you? This gentleman here. Yes, he's probably packing his suitcase right now. He'll be a bit nervous because he lives down south, you know, and um, I think the north makes him feel slightly uncomfortable. <coughs> but he does love it. So where are we playing? We're meeting in Louth on Thursday, playing the beautiful, beautiful St. James Church. That's, that's a stunning space. And then we go to another gorgeous church in Stokesley on Friday. St. Peter's and St. Paul's, I think it's called. And then a church which I'm told is absolutely beautiful. I've never been in Bridlington. It's called Christ Church. And, and then we finish on Sunday at the Ropery. 
which is our special place, affiliated to the Zenden, I think. All happy places. Looking forward very much. Got his bed all ready. He couldn't find a hotel in Bridlington, so he's back with us that night too. He said, oh, he said, I'd like to stay by the seaside, so I'll get a hotel that night. Couldn't find one. <clears throat> so I'll be in the Hotel Zenden. Oh, it's going to be great. Oh, I know what's going to play for you. A bit of Stevie Wonderful. Stevie Wonderful, he can do no wrong. <clears throat> oh, lots of lovely, exciting things on the list tonight, guys. <clears throat> We're going to go out with a bang. And that will mean something to Kevin and Jane. I hope. Here's a piece for a lovely Celia with memories of lovely Mike, happy times on the Isle of Sky, including visiting Floor de Gary. Yeah. <laughs>
Yes, Celia. You can see it now. The live stream, the Zen then transported to the Isle of Skye. They'll be being blown off a mountainside or eaten alive by midges, but it is a beautiful place. I was going to do like a fancy jig on the whistle, but I kept getting it wrong when I was practicing. So I've shelved it for require. <laughs> so I've got a mental note requires more work. And I'll do it soon. I promised myself, so I'm promising you, so I'll have to do it. I couldn't remember what it was called, or I would tell you. It's, it's hard. <laughs> so, Mr. Mike Cole had lots of lovely haikus ready last week, but I messed it up because I had... <laughs> Such technical difficulties, i.e. I forgot to press start. So it was rather ironic that his first haiku was a anticipation, anticipation, anticipation. The audience are ready. Welcome back, Snakey. So I've been away for so long down south doing, treading the boards and uh, burning the rubber. But the anticipation was um, almost, what's the word? N not, <laughs> oh, I can't think of the word, not justified. Uh, almost um, ended in total disappointment. Well, we kind of got there in the end. <clears throat> and, then, and then when it was all going wrong, he had another one, the live stream on hold. Where's Joe when you need him? I said, was that one of that was one of yours? <laughs> or was that just Sally saying? See you next week. Control upcoming shows. See you next week. Control Alt Delete. Ah well, I was tired, but we did have we had some lovely shows down south. Good feedback. Was it worth it? It's always worth it. It's always worth it. <laughs> oh, baby's getting a lot of um, exposure tonight. Start warming up slightly. It can take the mouthpiece back a millimeter or two. That's how you tune a saxophone. You bring the mouthpiece in and out on the what's what we call the cork because it's made of cork. I'll try that. <laughs> See how near to being in tune I end up. Beautiful song, Colin Blunstone. Hear Birchy now. I'm going to be making the backing track for this.
we have to believe in miracles, don't we? We need a few to sort things out. <clears throat> well, Sally came across a, a wonderful headline this week. I don't know if you saw it. Um, Snake on a bullet train causes rare railway delay in Japan. As you will know, you cosmopolitan peeps, you've probably all been there, how unbelievably on time and punctual the trains are in Japan. And yeah, this this uh, this train was delayed because a snake was found on the train. <clears throat> no, it wasn't me, I was here. Or actually, I was probably in Devon. But I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't on a bullet train. <laughs> Although I will be later in the year. And... Uh, I will try not to cause any disruption whatsoever. But it was a cute headline. Yeah. I remember we missed a train once when, when I was on tour there with the uh, Japanese rock star. And, uh, and that was very rare because you know, we had an extremely efficient tour manager and we were ever so well behaved because we knew <laughs> that bad things happened if we were late for a lobby call or anything like that because the organization was so so slick and uh, things were expected to happen on time and I think it was just traffic really I don't think it was our fault for once I mean us raggedy musicians but we missed the train and the, the tour manager he was so mad he was just like red in the face and stamping his feet. Oh, we weren't bothered. You know. This is Japan. There's usually another train about half an hour later. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, baby gets a rest. That's like a title for a song, Baby Gets Arrested. Or Baby Gets Arrested. Snakes on a Train. <clears throat> it's your first time, Mummy. The alto sax takes the place of the soprano.
There he goes, the lesser spotted fakey. I just felt I needed um, a bit longer blowing time at the end of that one. And then I have to remix it. No. No, 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 no. <clears throat> so, so uh, yet, uh, yet another challenge. You guys are always challenging me. I've got a challenge from, uh, from Celia. And uh, I thought, okay, I'll put that, I'll put that on the, um, the waiting list. <laughs> and uh, and then I realised, I thought at the time, I thought I'm not going to be here for a month of Sundays. Actually, more than a month of Sundays. So I thought, I wonder if I could get the challenge. I wonder if I could make it a 24-hour challenge. Because it was yesterday you contacted me, Celia, wasn't it? And it's a tune I never played. And then subsequently, so I did, I started working on it, and subsequently I thought, well, I mean, if you guys are up for it, we could have some streams that aren't on Sundays. What do you think? Or if you wait for a Sunday, it's going to be weeks. It's up to you. It's not, it's up to Sally, she's the boss. So Celia, I made it a 24-hour 24, 24 challenge. I've really set myself up to fail now. No, I haven't. We can do this thing. Me and you. And you. Big breath. I've been on an online shakuhachi uh, workshop this weekend. That's the shakuhachi, of course, the Japanese bamboo flute. And. Uh, Sometimes the internet is really, really fantastic. So we've been taught by this wrinkly old geezer from Kyoto. Um, and there's been a translator on another screen. <laughs> and it's, it's, been a, it's been connecting the voice to playing, which is a subject so near and dear to my heart. It's what we do as as wind players especially um, but as musicians in general I mean we're just we're just singing through our instrument and it's so close you know like going um it's the same thing really <laughs> just put put a reed and a bit of brass in between you and the listener so oh, it's been absolutely fantastic love it so <laughs> every day is a sunday when you retire says mike <laughs> okay then well if everybody agrees then well, I've even wrote some possible dates down but um, <laughs> May the 3rd which I think is a Friday uh, but you'll tell me May the 28th which I'm pretty sure is a Tuesday <laughs> should we put them in the diary it's up to you everything's up to you so uh, so although I'd never played this tune, it's called Make It Flow, and the full title is Make It Flow for Dr. J, who's a, a basketball player who, oh, it's, it's written by um, and performed originally by uh, Grover Washington Jr. Wonderful, wonderful sax player. Big influence on me in, in the early years. Still love him, of course. It's from his Wine Light CD which uh, I possess. <laughs> so I've heard the tune a few times. I just never tried to play it. Um, and it's so interesting, the title, to, to me and, and to Sally, because we had a Dr. J in, in our lives who uh, sort of saved Sally's life, really. So, uh, and I had a tune called For Dr. J, which some of you may remember because it featured on the... Uh, Snake Strings CD and the and the live set, of course. I think it was a whistle tune or a flute tune. A long time ago. So, um, so yeah, there's a... I mean, the fact that Celia wants to hear it and thinks that you guys would all enjoy it and that 
I could make a half decent job of it. And that's enough in itself. But the Dr. J connection too. Yeah. Had to be done. Right. So foolishly, I didn't write it down. But I'm going to remind myself of how it starts. I know it starts on a B. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. I got it. Let's come back. <laughs> Let's give it a go. What's it called? Yeah. <laughs>
I made it. I did it. Up to the end. It's a great tune. Wow. Quite often when I, I get my head into learning a new tune like that, especially doing it fast, I think. I don't know. I just marvel at where did the, where did that melody come from? It's so beautiful. It's so simple. It's just over a minor seventh chord. So simple. <laughs> it's a cracker. <laughs> Grover. Groovy Grover. I'm sure you're, you're, you're all the same. Um, it's so hard to turn your mind off, isn't it, sometimes? And that's one, one ambition that I have in my life, is to think less. And especially with the playing, just play, just play, don't think. <laughs> well, I love, I absolutely love teaching, and I have these wonderful students, I love them all. Um, starting a round of the horn camps that we do down in Spain again. Um, I'm just thinking, thinking all the time. The requests are coming in. Oh, we want to improvise better and have a better sound and better technique. I'm thinking, right, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that. And <clears throat> I'm thinking, what do these other players do? What, what was he thinking? <laughs> but when it, when it comes down to it, the place I want to get all these students to and myself is where we don't have to think anymore. We just shut our eyes and play or sing. That's when music is at its best. <laughs> when we're not overthinking it. Oh man. And there's Ali, look, and she was on the very first horn camp, which seems so long ago. And uh, I mean, it's, it's another thing that, that can trip you up as a player, as a musician, is you get too tied up with the equipment. You know, have you got the, the right sax for you? Is it the best sax? Have you got the best mouthpiece and all this stuff? And it, that just reminded me seeing that, that um, Ali's popped up on the string. Because that first stream, I had this sort of fancy pants um, neck piece. You see, the neck is separate from the uh, body uh, and I had one made of solid silver um, with um, rose gold on it <laughs> and so uh, you know, I thought it was great and the students thought it was great you know and I, I could tell that the students were thinking perhaps they perhaps that's what they needed you know so, <laughs> so they did a blindfold test on me with a normal crook and a fancy fancy old gold and silver one I couldn't tell the difference <laughs> So that showed me. So it's in the drawer now. <clears throat> it is so easy to fall victim of that. I once bought a set of speakers, like um, PA speakers, for live sound because um, I'd heard a sax player sound great through these speakers. So I bought the speakers. How stupid is that? It wasn't the speakers, it was the player. I went off on one then. It's your fault, Ali. I ended up down a rabbit hole. <laughs> a rabbit hole of sound and technique and thoughts. The gear. Yeah. I mean, you need a sax which is in a reasonable state of repair. But it doesn't have to be a fancy one. <laughs> it's, the, it's the P word, the practice word. Or the W word, putting the work in. That's what makes this sound good. Oh dear, I'm thinking too much again. I ever played everything I wanted to play, nearly. And are you all coming to the gigs? Just come to every one. I'll get the drinks in. Louth, Stokesley. And they're all lovely places too. Stokesley, Bridlington, Barton-on-Humber, the Ropery. 
Yeah. Come on, my posse. Let's just go to the mall. <laughs> I know Mike's coming to Bridlington. That's the start. <laughs> I think Kevin and Jane are coming to Barton. That's the start. So we're going to go out with a bang. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Then you, you've got to promise me now. <clears throat> we're going to go out dancing. Okay? So unless... You're wheelchair bound. In which case you can have a swish still. Or what other excuses could you come up with? Okay, got an extremely bad leg. Or just had a knee op in the last seven days. No, actually, I, I don't think I can accept that those as excuses. Right. <laughs> I won't be able to see you frustratingly, but you have to promise me. I do have spies that you're going to dance to this last tune. I'm going to go out with a bang. And uh, I'll see you before we go. Okay, so Kevin Jane, this is for you and for everybody on the stream. Thanks for being with me again. If you've donated, we love you even more. Pays for Joe's baked beans. Pace with the gear, actually. I do still like these headphones that you guys bought me. And we've, got, and we've managed to get a camera that where you can, it's not all completely blurred and weird and funny colours. <laughs> Remember the early stream days? <sighs> they were quite dark days because of the camera. <laughs> Just say, shut up, Snakey. We'll get Sally to tell me. Right. I came in with a bang, did I? Oh, yeah, yeah, I knocked that over. <laughs> okay. I had to get a fakie on the job for this and his cousins. And uh, I still haven't quite decided what to play on it. If that makes any sense, it, can, it kind of will make some sense, maybe. <laughs> it's called Bang Bang. Written by a bloke called Jimmy Sabato and another bloke called Joe Cuba. But we love the David Sanborn version very much. <laughs> so I'll see you before we go. One, two, uno, dos, tres, cuatro.
just my lions, my ducks and drakes. I could sense you swishing around the kitchen. Swishing around the kitchen table. Not quite patio time, is it yet? <laughs> Here's to you. Thanks to Fakie. Thanks to Joe. Thanks to Sally. Thanks to Celia for the challenge. Kevin Jane for the challenge. So I'll see you at all the gigs next week. Please tell your friends. Especially laughs, not selling very well. Everybody has friends in laughs, don't they? <laughs> so I'll hopefully see you at a gig. And then definitely see you on Friday, May the 3rd. And may the force be with you and the health be with you and the happiness be with you. You take care of yourselves and of each other. I say it often and I do mean it. Yeah. And we'll all meet by hook or by crook very soon. Thank you, Mr. Robin Smith, for that little preview. Carry on packing your bags. And I'll see you next week. Bye 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 bye. Thanks for being here.